Today we're going to do an efficiency test or a range test, whatever you want to call it, with the Model X. Um, we're going to do the same test three times to make sure that we get a solid result and um, just see what kind of range this car has. Now, you may be able to hear it over the dog barking dog in the background. <laughs> um, the car is currently heating and warming and, you know, preconditioning. I'm going to run that for about 30 minutes before we begin. That way the car is at at least somewhat of an optimal temperature. The first test we're going to leave here. The test doesn't actually start until we get to the interstate on-ramp. And um, we're going to reset the efficiency tracker, you know, the... The trip meter and see exactly what watt hour per mile we're getting during our test. The test will go for about 30 miles round trip to the Love's truck stop where we'll use the cat scale to weigh the truck or the car. Not truck, <laughs> truck, truck scale. Uh, weigh the car. Then we'll come back and on the, on the same interstate off ramp that we got on the opposite side. We'll stop the test and see exactly what our watt hour per mile is. The test will be run at 70 miles per hour. For the second part of the test, we're gonna go pick up a trailer. I don't know the exact GVWR of the trailer yet. I will have to check that, but we will check it before we take off with it. And that's what the hitch is for. The trailer will be empty. I'm estimating it's about a 1300 pound empty trailer. But we're going to take it to the Love's truck stop, weigh it on the cat scale, and see exactly what difference we have versus the car and then the car with an empty trailer. Uh, same test, 70 miles per hour. We're going to track our watt hour per mile and compare it. And then for the third part of the test, we're going to load my Yamaha Grizzly onto the trailer and do the same test again. Again, we'll weigh the trailer and the Grizzly just to make sure how much extra weight we added to the test. Each time we're gonna get a watt hour per mile reading and see what we've got. So let's get started. All right, we've reset trip A. We're gonna to try to accelerate onto the interstate moderately. I mean, obviously we wanna get up to speed and be able to merge, but we don't wanna take off too hard. So here we go. We need 70, which we are at 60. Can merge. There's no one coming. Oh, we are speeding. And I will set the cruise at 70 for right now. We are going to use autopilot for this test. Um, we're still not 70. What happened there? I don't know. We're going to use autopilot for this test and um, we'll see what our trip A says when we get back. Just in case I forgot to mention, we started at 78%. Just want to give an update here. Um, <laughs> we're, we're a few miles in. And uh, that's not what I was expecting as far as range goes or watt hour per mile. Um, I, I was really hoping that, you know, at 70 with no massive accelerations, just cruising down the interstate, we would be getting better efficiency. But um, wow. Okay. So um, it is, you know, it is a Model X, it is a pretty heavy car. Um, I'm riding in the left lane, you know, there's no one around me, so I'm not like blocking up traffic, but I'm riding in the left lane to avoid drafting off of the truck there just to, you know, have a solid test here that doesn't interfere with other things. Um, and that's, that is a very high usage, uh, just for the car. Um, I'm, I'm kind of afraid that we're going to be over a thousand whenever I put the four wheeler on the trailer behind the car. It's not looking great, but, um, uh, we're about halfway to our turnaround point, so we'll keep an eye on it. We are approaching our exit for the truck stop, and uh, this is where we're at right now, 364 and falling. And when I take this exit, I'm gonna let it regen. I'm not gonna use the brakes, so we'll see if that recovers. I'll catch back up with you on the scale. Using light acceleration to get into the truck stop, we are here. We'll go weigh the car. This is our halfway reading. The car weighed in at 5,560 pounds without a trailer. And this is our efficiency. We're now back on interstate and we're gonna go to the end point and report exactly what we get. Here's the end result of the first test. We averaged 360 watt hour per mile. 
at 68% battery, so we used exactly 10% for the first test. Now I'm gonna go get the trailer and see what we've got. Okay, I went and got the trailer. Not a lot changed, we're gonna reset trip A. And we'll go and I'll catch up with you halfway because during this test, I won't have autopilot. We definitely used a lot more just getting on interstate. As you can see, we're about six miles in at this point and uh, we're not really going down as far as usage yet but there's still a way to go you know we can still change it up so um just i got the cruise set at 70. i'm not using autopilot because i can't with a trailer uh, midway we're at 60 percent here so um did i report the starting well okay so the great thing about this car is it is a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack so if i used six kilowatt hours so far we started at 65. That's the best way to calculate that. Halfway in, we're at 750 watt hour per mile, 11 kilowatt hour for halfway. And let's get out and look at the scale because we barely fit. We do, we are on the front tire, back tire, trailer tire, just barely. Let's get a weight and see where we're at. The end of the second test, we uh, averaged 771 watt hour per mile, 793 since we left the scale. Uh, we are at 41% battery. So according to this, we use 22 kilowatt hour. That would be 22% of the battery. Um, now, I think we'll be safe, even if it were to double this uh, doing the four wheeler, but uh, we're going to keep an eye on it, see how things go, and we may end up having to stop at the supercharger on the way back. So um, we're going to try to do the whole test before we supercharge just to make sure we get an accurate reading here. So this is the trailer setup that we've got going here. Uh, the weight with the trailer was 7320, car and trailer combined. I think it was 50-something. Yeah, I don't remember the first weight, but we will have those numbers at the end. Um, I'm going to get the four-wheeler and load it up and strap it down and kill a dog. Not really. Don't take me literal here. Anyway, um, <laughs> and yeah, just check that everything is still secure. And we will probably go charge before we do the second test just because I don't want to screw up the test by having to stop and charge. We are plugged into the supercharger now, and I'm just going to let it go to maybe 55, 60, maybe just to see um, what we got. Not getting a whole lot right now. This is a 250 kilowatt supercharger, but I guess my percentage is still high. But um, it says it's charging me, but it's not charging me because I have free miles right now. This time I'm going to set a trip because I wanted to see what we're gonna get back with. Now it's what it, that's what it's estimating. We'll see how that changes throughout the trip but I did reset our uh, trip A. So here we go. Uh, we're starting at 53% this time. And if you wanna see the cargo, that's what we're hauling. You hear the term a lot. Uh, you could barely even tell it was towing a trailer. You know, people say that a lot. And um, I'm, I'm not, not feeling that. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, when the trailer was empty, it definitely moved around and jarred around a lot more than it does with weight on it. So that may be a good thing, but um, I can still definitely tell it's back there. I can feel the car pulling harder than usual to pull the trailer. Um, and you know, it's just, you can tell it's there. Now, one important fact about the Tesla is it doesn't have trailer brakes. It has no trailer brake controller. Even though it does have a seven pin adapter for the trailer, there's no brake controller at all. Um, so you don't get to, you know, pull the brakes if it starts to sway. Like that's what you would do usually, but you can't do it here. Um, in fact, I, to compare it though, to say like my Ram, I think the Tesla pulls it better than the Ram. And the Ram, you know, it wasn't so much about the power or the diesel. It was more about like how it handled the trailer behind it. You could definitely feel the trailer behind the Ram, just constant jars and, and pulls. And this one, you feel it, but not nearly as bad as it, it you felt it in the Ram. 
And then to compare my new F-350, you literally cannot tell that it's behind you. Um, I, I could tell when it had a little weight on it, but empty, you could not tell it was back there. I mean, the truck drove like it would normally drive. According to the manufacturer, my four-wheeler weighs about a thousand pounds, just under 900 and some pounds. So um, we're gonna get the actual weight here in just a second, as soon as I can get into the truck stop. As you can see, we're not getting there anytime soon. And um, I, I'm gonna ahead and say, I'm pleasantly surprised with the efficiency. I'll show it to you when we get on the scale, but I am pleasantly supply, surprised with the amount of efficiency we've gotten on this trip. So the fully loaded weight is 8,080 pounds and we averaged 732 watt hour per mile. I was fully expecting to go over a thousand and um, we're just gonna take it home now, take off the exit and get the final result and see what the numbers are. We're currently at 41% battery, so we did way better than I thought we would. And uh, yeah, we'll go from here. All right, we are into the test, 28%. The car guessed it exactly, if you looked at the trip a while ago. 768 watt hour per mile. 29 miles is the trip, it took 22 kilowatt hours. So again, 22% regardless of the load at this point. Um, and if you did the math on the last clip, it was just over 700 pounds on the four wheeler and it has a full tank of gas. So I think Yamaha needs to rethink their, um, they told me it was just under a thousand pounds. It was like 950 something dry. It's got a full tank of gas and it weighed in at 700 and something. Now those scales could be off, but Cat is very, very accurate. They will actually tell you that if they, you weigh on their scale and then you get a ticket for being overweight, they'll pay it. That's how accurate they are. So, um, all right, well, that's the end of that. Let's go put all this stuff up and we'll recap. I've already taken the four wheeler off. I forgot to get a picture of it all hooked up, but um, <laughs> I left the trunk open this time because when I loaded the four wheeler, the alarm triggered. I guess it auto locked and it decided someone's trying to do something. So <laughs> left the trunk open so that it would not trigger. So, um, you know, honestly, <laughs> I'm more impressed than I thought I was going to be with this. Um, adding weight to this trailer did literally nothing. I think the only reason that we got such poor efficiency is because of this gate. Um, the constant air rushing against this going down the highway is ultimately what I believe ruined. I'm trying to do this one. Ultimately, what I believe ruined the efficiency. But um, honestly, I can't complain.